Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about a very important and easy to use grep command in terminal. Basically you can use this one in a Linux or Mac OS and in order to find something very easily this command is a must to know. So in order to use it, it's very simple. So you're going to just type grep and then whatever you want to search for, for example, if you want to look for a text and then where do you look, where do you want to look for? You can just give it a file name or you can just use like a pattern to look on a directory or anywhere. So if you just do this one, it's going to look for the text, text or a string, just text everywhere in the current directory. So basically, as you can see now, we have text here, we have text and etc. etc. So it's very simple. grep, whatever you're searching for and where do you want to search for that one? I'm going to just clear and then go through some uh, examples. So you can see we have like, uh, if I go ls, we have package.json. And if you look at package.json, so we have quite a file here. So you can see we have some you know, packages, scripts, and then dev dependencies, etc., etc. So we're going to use this file as an example to search and look into this file. So basically, what we want to do, we want to look for the name in package.json. So I'm going to just say grep, and then we are looking for the name, and then package.json. So it's going to show you exactly that line that have name. From here, if you pass dash n, it's going to give you the line number as well, because if the file is very big and if you want to know what line exactly had this one, all you have to do is just to pass dash n and it's good to go. So we're going to press n. Now you can see in line two, we're going to have name. I want to look for something else here. So I'm going to look for ESLint, for example. And now you can see we have the lines and also in this in this uh, lines we have ESLint. But what I am actually missing is the color. So if I just could just add color to this output, it would be much easier to find out. So I'm going to pass dash dash color and press enter. Now you can see wherever we have ESLint, then we are going to see all of these ESLints in the file. OK, I'm going to just clear it up. And then the next thing that I want to show is recursive. So we want to look basically everywhere for the ESLint in the current directory. So I'm going to push just, I'm going to just pass dash R for recursive. And here in a sort of package.json, basically I'm going to look in star. So everywhere recursively. So it will look into other directories as well and subdirectories and then look for ESLint. So you can see now we're going to have a few more things here. So we have changelog, for example, we have uh, grep.sh, so we have package.json and many more things. So now it's good, but it's quite messy. What I want to do, put dash L here and press enter. Now you can see these are the list of files which has grep. But because we are using dash L, basically this, this color and n is kind of useless. So if we're going to do this one, we're still going to get the same result. So everything is good, but we're going to just expand this one and look for something else. So in this example, we are looking for link everywhere recursively. We are just going to show the color as well, number of line, and then we are looking for i, which is basically is case insensitive. So you can see we have link and we have with capital link. So if I remove base in my example, if I remove I, you can see it only going to show the small letter one. So we have small letters, not the big one. The moment I'm going to put just dash I, it's going to give me the case insensitive one as well. Here we have grep and we are going to look for basically link in the readme as well. So so I want to look for number of lines or line number and then I'm going to actually I want to see everything which is case insensitive just pressing here it's good but now if I want to invert whatever is in the output so I want to show every line which doesn't have link all I have to do is just to invert inverse it by basically put dash V so I'm going to press this one now you can see none of these actually have link in there 
So this is very good and handy if you just want to, for example, every line which doesn't have link in that file name. So this is how you're going to do it. So with the V, which is a inverse and I is case insensitive dash N is the line number. We will move on and we're going to talk about dash W dash W is literally the whole word means update. So if let's say we have update me, it's not going to look for that, but it's going to specifically look for the word update. So there should nothing come before or after I'm talking about without the space. So let's have a look. For example, now we are looking at a few lines here. So we have update. You can see some of them is auto update and some are updates and auto updates. You can see the moment I just removed the word uh, or dash W, you can see we're going to get even more. So we're going to get capital one. We're going to get, for example, auto update like this and disable update or something before or after. So sometimes to get more context, it's good to know what was before that line and what is after that line. So A is for after, B is for before. So if you want to see one line after or one line before, then you're going to just put this one. So we're looking at ZSHRC file and then we're looking for update underscore case insensitive color and then line number. But here, one line after, one line before. Let's just press enter. We can see all of these things. So it's one line before, one line after. Now I'm going to change this one to, for example, B2. So it means two lines before. Now you can see line 29, 30, and then we have 31. And then again, here we have line 32, 33, line 34 has the update underscore, and then one line after. So A dash A is capital and dash B is capital. And then the number after that is going to just give us more context. If you're looking in a very big file and you want to know what was happening, grep is very strong command. So you can also pass regular expression. So in this example, we are saying, just show me every line with the color that has start with hash in readme. So if I press enter, it's going to show all of those lines here. And then, as you know, exactly, we can just do also dash V, then it's going to show us every line. We're going to invert it or inverse it. So basically every line that doesn't start with dash. So it's very interesting that if you want to just do these things, either you can start uh, with some of these options that you can pass in the command, which like dash V, or you can manipulate the regular expression and then give the same, get the same result. So I'm going to press here. Now you can see we're going to get those lines which start with hash sign. Sometimes we have like, for example, if you just have git log dash dash one line, you can see this is all of our commit history. And if you want to change something or if you want to search for a specific commit, that would be quite difficult if you have a very big one. The way to do it is this way. So we have git log one line. And then as a result of that, we just use pipe or this vertical line. And then this is going to be the input for the grep. So we're going to say git log one line, and then we are looking for grep and what we are looking for. For example, we're going to say everything that start with feet. If I press this one, now we're going to get all of only the commit, which start with feet colon. So it's very handy to just pass the output of one command and then just search on that output. If you have ls command or if you have anything else, that's still the same case. So I'm going to give you one more example with ls and then you can see. So we have ls dash l. So you can see all our files are here. What I'm going to do actually, I'm going to just look for every file which was basically modified or generated in January. So it's going to be these two and these few. So we're going to just do l ls dash l and then we're going to pipe it to grep and then we are looking for jan so now you can see only these files are in an output you can search recursively you can do a lot of these things it really depends whatever is before the pipe this is the input to grep let's say i want to look on all files so we're going to say ls dash L is list of all files. A shows all the hidden H for humans. T is time base and R is for reverse source. 
sort and then we're looking for February one so if you look at the February one then all of them are here and they are sorted reverse so if I just basically go there and remove this one now you can see it shows all the files they are sorted as well but if I want to just get the February one then all I have to do is just pipe it and then that output whatever is the output here will be the input for the grep and that's how you can just work with the grep I hope you found this one quite interesting and also you found something new grep is going to be very handy if you're going to work with terminal and if you're working on any sort of development one day you're going to just come across and you need to search and you don't have the GUI or maybe even behind GUIs they're using this one this is much faster and more flexible because you can do pretty much anything and you can search everywhere with any pattern that you have so thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video